Welcome, it's indisputable, I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, we have Ray Vanna, host of Reactions on Twitch. It is a Twitch exclusive. She is a remarkable analyst. She'll be a great breakdown. Top story of the day, Jenny Dam Thomas. Now I told you, I said it on day one, this wife of a United States Supreme Court justice is still in a cult. She has cult like behavior and she tried to influence more than one legislative body to overturn the election. I said that in the initial reporting. Now we have evidence of her attempting to literally abandon the United States Constitution, abandon the Virginia Constitution in order to make sure her leader, Donald Trump, remained in power. Okay, let me tell you why this is important. In January, remember, it was Clarence Thomas who was the only United States Supreme Court justice to support Trump's request to block White House records from being sent to the House committee investigating the January 6th riot, the terrorist attack. Now, he was the only justice that voted in favor of Trump's point of view. All of the other justices, left leaning, right leaning, said this was a violation of judicial sentiment, protocol, order, and law. Except for Clarence Thomas. Ironically, you know who else holds the same position as Clarence Thomas? Jenny Thomas did the exact same position as her husband. Now remember, they say there's no discussion about cases between Clarence Thomas and his activist wife, Jenny Thomas. Well, there's more. Virginia Jenny Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas emailed Wisconsin legislators in November 2020 and asked them to effectively reverse then President Donald Trump's election loss to President Joe Biden in that state. That's according to emails disclosed yesterday. It was already known that the conservative advocate Jenny Thomas had contacted lawmakers in Arizona and other states with a similar request seeking to undo Biden's victory there. The Washington Post first reported Thursday that Jenny Thomas wrote two Republican lawmakers in Wisconsin. That was November 9th, 2020, follow the timeline. At virtually the same time the Arizona lawmakers received a verbatim copy of the same message from Thomas. Thomas sent the emails days after Trump refused to concede the election to Biden, vowing will be going to the US Supreme Court. The subject lines of her messages read, please do your constitutional duty. Once again, she said, if you don't steal this election, damn it, we're gonna take this all the way to the US Supreme Court, where my husband is a Supreme Court justice. Warning or threat, you make the decision here. Please stand strong, another quote, please stand strong in the face of media and political pressure. Those emails said according to the post, which obtained them from the watchdog group documented. There's more, please reflect on the awesome authority granted to you by our constitution. And then please take action to ensure that a clean slate of electors is chosen from our state, Thomas wrote. Documented obtained the emails through a request under the Wisconsin's public records laws. Now, here's an irony connected to that whole statement. She said, use the power granted to you by the constitution. There's a case right now before the US Supreme Court that would in fact allow state lawmakers to ignore the popular vote of their state and choose in favor of whatever legislative directive is given by that particular state. Citing in the, in the lawsuit that it is a state right to determine who they would like to be slated as electors rather than a power connected to the people. That court case is before the Supremes as we speak. It seems as if Jenny Thomas was already aware that this would be the argument presented by conservatives. As a matter of fact, 
if states would have done exactly what Jenny Thomas said they should do, ignore the sentiment of the voters, ignore the popular vote, ignore the electoral college system and elect your own. That means that would have been their affirmative defense if they would have done so. She has just played her hand here, there's more. Thomas sent 29 messages, 29 to Trump White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. In addition to the other states, 29 directly to the Chief of Staff after the 2020 election, encouraging him to pursue then ongoing efforts to undo Biden's victory. CBS News reported in March. She said, and I quote, help this great president stand firm, Mark. You are the leader with him who is standing for America's constitutional governance at the prep at the precipice. She wrote Meadows that November 10th, 2020. The majority of uh, the majority knows Biden and the left is attempting the greatest heist of our history, she says. Ladies and gentlemen, there is documented proof and an admission from Jenny Thomas that she was once a member of a cult. She has now traded that old cult for the new one called QAnon, the Trumpites, whatever you would like to refer to them as. This is a cult like behavior. This is a cultic tendency. This is group think ideology. This is adversarial to anything logical or common sense worthy. President Joe Biden finally, finally is declaring that Donald Trump is a, and I quote, threat to the country. For the first time, he dropped Trump's name specifically rather than saying the previous president, et cetera, et cetera. So Joe Biden saying, yes, Trump is a threat to the country in a speech that contained his harshest rhetoric to date about his predecessor in the Oval Office and the MAGA movement. He also said equality and democracy are under assault. We do ourselves no favor to pretend otherwise. Biden declared at the top of his remarks before Philadelphia's Independence Hall. So let me be very clear, I know people are saying, well, it took him long enough. Well, still, it's not enough, by the way. Here's why Biden is now becoming more forceful against Donald Trump. As I said earlier in the week, Trump is going to be indicted conclusively. He's going to be indicted. What Biden is doing is he's creating the public relations presentation for context to the indictment. This is the same engagement that would happen if we were, let's say, to go to war with the foreign nation. There's always a psychological aspect first. That provides the pretext to the context and then you get the indictment. That's exactly what's happening here. Joe Biden in many ways is still playing a very political role. Now, do I agree with the role he's playing? Yes, go ahead, whatever gets us closer to indicting this criminal former president, let's do it. But let's be very clear, Joe Biden is doing this because of a collective goal to prosecute Donald Trump, which I am in full agreement with. Okay, my dear sister, what are your thoughts here? Jenny damn Thomas. Yeah. So first I wanna say this, she has not gotten enough attention for the threat to democracy that she is. And for anyone wondering why Clarence Thomas is allowed to make these decisions on cases that directly implicate his wife, it's because although there is a code of ethics and code of conduct for judges, there is not one for Supreme Court justices. So there is no legally binding uh, oath that he's sworn a precedent that he's he's agreed to that requires him to step down so that he's not hearing these cases. There should be, there should be, and there's lots of uh, groups of lawyers and judges that are advocating for that. But as it stands, there isn't. Um, but I mean, this is a woman who literally had unfettered access to his law clerks. Uh, it was reported on before. She was in direct contact texting them. Talking to his law clerks, these are the people that help write his decisions. They do all the research that goes in to the writing that he does. She's helping make these decisions that implicate her. This is a huge, huge threat to democracy. It's it's horrifying and it's just sort of getting ignored by a lot of major news networks. Of course, TIT has been covering it as it's been happening. I know Dr. Rich, you've been on top of this, but it's scary to, to, yeah. to know that someone who is currently still trying to overthrow the previous presidential election is also in the ear of a Supreme Court justice who's making decisions on cases about that election. That's right, and the January 6th committee, they are afraid to take down institutions, remember, 
We now know the Secret Service deleted text messages unlawfully. We know the Department of Defense engaged in a similar operation. We also know that they likely hired a contractor in order to do these particular, let's say, delete text message programs. In addition to that, we know that they have not been subpoenaed by the January 6th committee. Jenny Thomas, who has no special immunity, she has not received an actual subpoena to testify. Also, Vice President Mike Pence has not received a subpoena to testify under oath. That needs to change quickly. We're gonna continue to stay on top of this story. All right. Miscarriage of justice. You see, when black people are threatened by white people and black people decide to defend themselves, uh, and they claim stand your ground in any other defense. Typically, they are still prosecuted where a white male in that same situation would have been allowed to remain free. Let me give you this case, Mark Wilson, let's put his picture up full mass. You may not have heard of this story, we covered it one time in the past. Mark Wilson, 23 years of age, was accused of shooting and killing 17 year old Haley Hutchinson after he fired at a truck full of teens in the Statesboro, Georgia vehicle June 2020. Wilson's attorneys claimed he fired out of self defense. After two of the teens in the truck yelled racial slurs and tried to run him and his white girlfriend off the road. He acted in self defense and one of his bullets struck and killed Hutchinson who was sitting in the back seat of the pickup. A black man who was uh, th- this was interesting because a black man who has affirmed the defense of self defense is not able to stay free. What happened? He was convicted after a day of deliberation. The grand jury decided that Mr. Wilson was not justified when he used his legal gun, legal gun against the teens he maintained made him fear for his life. But it didn't punish him to the full extent of the law. Involuntary manslaughter could mean up to 10 years behind bars, a less severe sentence than the possibility of life in prison if convicted of murder. Wilson is scheduled for sentencing in September, uh, on September 20th. Let's go back at the time of the shooting. Wilson's lawyers said that if Wilson were white, the state's response would have played out much differently. Wilson, despite having no criminal record whatsoever, okay, no criminal record at all prior to, prior to this shooting, spent a year and a half in jail <clears throat> awaiting a trial after the original judge overseeing the case, Michael Muldrew, denied him bail. Said, you will not get bail in my state. So he denied him bail, so he stayed in jail for a year and a half. The judge said that Mr. Wilson, with no prior criminal record whatsoever, the judge said Mr. Wilson posed a significant threat to the persons in the community based on the charges against him. The judge then was recused from the case in February after he met with two of the prosecuting attorneys in private and allowed them to view emails Wilson sent to his family. That's called ex parte communication and it is a violation of ethics and rules. The judge engaged in that after not allowing Mr. Wilson to post bond. It was only after a new judge got on the case, that's Judge Ronnie Thompson. That is when a bond was granted at $100,000. I'm gonna give you background to this case compared to others. The case, has been closely watched by experts and local human rights organizations. Just like Georgia to see whether a black man could successfully use a stand your ground argument when using deadly force. Similar self defense arguments led to successful acquittals. As you know, Kyle Rittenhouse, Zimmerman, etc. Let's talk about the stand your ground law. From 2005 to 2010, the first five years after stand your ground laws were introduced, Just 11% of the cases involving a black shooter invoking stand your ground and a white victim were deemed justified according to a 2020 study by the US Commission on Civil Rights. Compared to 45% of cases involving a black victim and a white shooter. 
So let's be very clear. Um, we've been following this case since day one. I started following this case even before I got on TYT. His attorney used to be the president of the Georgia NAACP and is a remarkable civil rights leader. Bottom line, there's no ambiguity about the threat. Everybody, everybody agrees he was under threat. Everybody has concluded that he in fact, had a reason to fear for his safety. They have still convicted this black male for self defense that you know and I know would have been permitted under any other circumstance if he had not been a man of color. This is why the criminal justice system has problems that must be fixed, must be addressed, must be reformed. After he gets charged, the judge engages in an egregious act to keep him in, in jail without, without any remedy to post bond, fight these charges until it is exposed that he in fact has an inappropriate relationship with the prosecutors on this case. All right, appeal is coming obviously, we're gonna give you the update to that. Uh, my dear sister, what are your thoughts here? I mean, the first thing you said at the top of the story was exactly right, miscarriage of justice. Horrifying miscarriage of justice. Uh, and for anyone wondering why the article stipulated, and you mentioned that this was a black man and his white girlfriend who got chased off the road, um, they were not the racial slurs, they were yelling at him, they were calling his girlfriend a slur lover. And of course, in especially with a history of, of uh, lynching in the South, of course, he was had reason to be fearful that they were going to kill him. And it's important that that was that was included in the story, but also the fact that the jury deliberated for just one day. It only yeah. took them one day to decide on this case. Horrifying. Of course, it's it's good that he wasn't convicted of the higher uh, charges. He never should have been charged with them for the first in the first place. Never should have been convicted with uh, involuntary manslaughter. Never should have been charged for it. And even having faced all those charges, should have prevailed on a stand your ground defense. The reason he didn't is because he's a black man. That's it. That's right. I mean, white men who have have had much uh, weaker claims to stand your ground in self defense have have successfully claimed it, successfully defended themselves with it. The only difference between those cases, I mean, in this instance, it's a black man. I mean, it's it's obvious to anybody who's been paying attention. Yep, you got a young black male in the deep south. He gets convicted of what? Shooting at white people. He gets convicted also, possibly for having a white girlfriend. But let's be clear about the facts here. The law suggests that he was engaged in self defense, period, period. All right. We have an indis we have an indisputable news exclusive. Never has this been on national news. A police officer who decides to arrest someone because the person is being rude to him. Here it is. Tell me why you why he's being arrested? Can you not? Let me talk to you. You can talk to me. Stay right there. You don't tell me where to stop. Please don't okay. back yeah. into What's me. your name? Okay, so what's going on right now is I was here waiting for a coffee and your boyfriend comes back to me very close and he goes, hey, look what it is, it's a pig. And I was like, excuse me. No, he doesn't like cops. Okay, what if I came up to your boyfriend or you and called your name? And then we go, oh, my God, my feelings got hurt and he walked and away. And guess what? Guess and what? I said, can I help? But he goes, tell no. Tell me where it's illegal to say that you, I'm sorry, I don't think you're a pig, but tell me where it's illegal to well, say that. Well, it started to be a harassment when he starts to garage. Okay, we'll make we'll make it a day. We'll we'll see what we can do because we can't have him going around cop you, and calling people names and be disorderly. Because you can't handle anybody saying something mean about you. Not just me. Probably everybody else he's running. Yeah, because he's had a lot of bad issues with cops. This police officer has arrested a male in Alaska because he did not like the insult. Which by the way, that is not a violation of any statutory dynamic. You have a constitutional right to be a jerk in the United States of States of America. You have a constitutional right to say things that are contrary to other individuals. You have the right, protected right 
to be adverse to the police. That's right. You see, if the government can prosecute you for saying things that are adversarial to the government, then you have tyranny. You have a government out of control. This is why Black Lives Matter, this is why they say defund the police because of egregious actions like this. Now, there's a response also from the man whose name is Joshua. Here it is. I have a message for all the people who are leaving critical comments on my video. Good. I support your right to criticize my behavior and my interactions with the police. With that being said, law enforcement needs to be reminded that free speech isn't always polite speech, and they are not above the law. If we're afraid to express displeasure towards our law enforcement because the officer might overreact, that is in effect a nullification of our First Amendment rights. I'm one of the lucky ones. Not everybody has video to corroborate their side of a police interaction. If I was a different color, or I was a different gender, or I was neurodivergent, this could have ended a lot worse for me. And that's just unacceptable. We need to end our abusive relationship with the police. We cannot be afraid of the people that we pay to protect us. Farewell said, let's put up a picture of the officer full mass here. Let's be very clear about what has happened. This particular officer decided to arrest a man because he did not like a word the man used. The individual did not engage in any statutory crime. He had not created any element of harm for the cop nor anybody else. There was no reason to arrest Joshua. Now, this cop abused his power. He abused his authority, clearly. This cop admitted on camera that he was arresting a man for being rude. And possibly he's rude to other people. Once again, you have a constitutional right to be rude. The identity of this officer has not been confirmed. My production team went through hundreds of pictures of police officers could not find this particular cop. Um, but I'm sure you can. So the identity of the cop has not been exposed yet. We do know that he is a member of the Anchorage Police in Alaska. That department has not publicly acknowledged the incident, nor has it released a statement on the matter that may change after today. If you remember, we have covered that police department before. Remember this, remember when the woman showed a white privilege card who was pulled over by that police department and they let her go. She posted it on social media, all of the cops were smiling and happy. Even though she was swerving, speeding and did not have a license, they decided not to arrest her, not to give her a ticket, not to do a breathalyzer because she presented her white privilege card. What it really said is that she was a Trump supporter and so were they. And that's why they thought it was funny and they let her go. Who's the chief of this operation? There he is. Chief Michael Curley of the Anchorage Police Department. All right, we need answers here, Chief. Who is this officer? What has the internal response been? And what was the police report? What did he put on the police report to justify the arrest? Because I guarantee you, he did not put the guy called me a pig, so I affected an arrest. Guarantee you, he didn't put that on the police report, which means more than likely. He lied on the police report to justify the arrest and to justify the interaction. Which also means he committed another crime called falsifying the police report, which is a violation of your oath of office. All right, my dear sister, thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, multiple courts of appeals, federal courts of appeals in the United States have held that you it is protected under the First Amendment, protected speech to give the finger to a cop, to swear at a cop, to voice your dissatisfaction with the police in this country. And I actually did a story this morning for Rebel HQ, extraordinarily similar facts. A kid walks past a cop, flicks him off, cop gets the rate gets out of his car, chases this kid down. The kid knows his rights and he's just schooling this cop over and over again. And then calls him an effing pig and the cop arrests him You know, on the, on the side of the road. This like 14, 15 year old kid. And the reason they do this is because they can't handle criticism. They can't handle people who don't bow down to the power they think they should hold over the public. They can't ha- handle any sort of perceived disrespect. Because once they feel they don't have that 
that stranglehold, that monopoly of force over the public, keeping the people they're meant to serve and protect in fear, then they feel powerless, then they feel weak. And they're meant to serve and protect us, but really they just wanna keep us afraid of them. They wanna abuse the public, they wanna strip us of our constitutional rights. I mean, where are the people who always, who always claim that they're fierce defenders of the First Amendment right now? Where are they? The people yep. who say that they want to, you know, protect the rights of of Nazis to say horrible, awful things. Where are they when people disrespect the police? Silent or opposed to that because they're bootlicking the police departments. They're they are bowing down to this perceived power and they can't handle people standing up against it. Yeah, the irony is unreal. You have all of this authority. You have all of this power. And you are willing to violate your office in order to arrest someone who made you upset because of their public, their speech that is protected. Doesn't make sense, but that's why we expose it, we follow it, and we give it to you straight. All right, we got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, we got a lot of show left. Let me remind everyone, Unboss with Nina Turner, all right? October 17th, this is a big deal, okay? Make sure everyone, everyone, mark your calendar, all right? I do sister will expose how the elites in government media and other sectors game the system and what we can do to stop their gaming. Tune in every weekday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Starting October 17th, youtube.com forward slash unbossed TYT, youtube.com forward slash unbossed TYT. All right, let me read some of these amazing comments. We got a lot of them. Thank you all for joining us via chat. Tall glass of shut up juice says the US system of injustice is absolutely atrocious and criminally abusive to an entire race of people. Another case that is just heartbreaking. There you go. Uh, infantry chef uh, says, the cops that are offended by these insults have ego problems. That is all, probably why they are cops in the first place. Drop mic moment. Yeah. Um, Jamerrill Ritchie, are we related? All right, I uh, love the show, Dr. Ritchie, keep up the good work. Thank you, Jamerrill, and thank you so much for that gift as well. Uh, Winter Scoop says, how is she not arrested yet? Talking about Jenny Thomas, she hasn't even been subpoenaed, <laughs> right? How is she not under oath yet is my question. Okay, YouTube members, uh, Mr. Jay Guns, the blind MC, upgraded membership to Double Dose. Thank you so much, my dear brother, really appreciate you. Troy Lavelle, welcome to Indisputable, thank you for joining. If you would like to join Indisputable, real simple, real quick, just hit that join button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, go to the YouTube page, Hit that join button on Indisputable, we got you. Multiple levels to join, we'd love to see you there. Okay, I got something for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You wanna call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're I feel great, back off! I'm gonna tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Punk ass, racist ass bitch, say, say what you had to say on here. Hey. Go back where you came from, you Well, he's white. Come on over here. Come what are you, what are you gonna do over there? What? What the are you gonna do if I go over there? Cut your goddamn off. I was driving the right way. You were the one doing Come all on. the work. Come on over here. Do something. Come on. Get out. Do something. I'm not no f Get the f out of the car and do something, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you goddamn foreign. Is that a. Yep. You see, the Karenicity in this male Karen runs deep. He is, in fact, dangerous. He has a big ass knife in his truck for whatever reason, driving around with it to, I don't know, hunt. So, what happened here? A traffic dispute, traffic disputes happen. Once you decide to allow a traffic dispute to create, I guess, racist sentiment from you, violent tendencies. Well, keep in mind, 
you may end up on indisputable. Why? Because we provide a mirror, a mirror for reflection. And if you're willing, if you accept it, a mirror for correction as well. We're trying to get information about this. Uh, let's put up the picture for mass here. Uh, the individual has not been identified um, as of yet, but it is a scary scene to have someone threaten you and your physical safety with a knife because there was a minor traffic dispute, not even an accident, just a debate. Okay, Ravonna, thoughts here? Yeah, um, the, the thing that really stood out is that the uh, man who recorded the video is saying uh, that the Karen was in the wrong, that he was driving the correct way and that the Karen was messing up. And it just made me think of how Karens are so terrified of being wrong, right. that they will turn to violence when the, the accusation is made, that they might be in the wrong. And immediately, it, they can't comprehend that they might have made a mistake. That's not possible for them, so they turn to violence, racist rhetoric, racial abuse, whatever whatever horrible tools they have at their disposal to fight against the, the worst thing that, that could happen to them, uh, the consequences of their own actions. Yeah. And talking about consequences, we have a little segment I call Consequences and Repercussions. Here it is. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. This is my mom's car and I was losing it. Okay, well, you need to call your mom up here and give me your insurance card. I'm calling the police. Thank you so much. Yeah, then he runs away. Okay, this was actually a bit of a throwback. It happened in Alabama. There was already an accident. He decided to flee the scene and then create another accident and decided to flee the scene again. We understand this may be your mama's vehicle. Um, all the more reason for you definitely not to flee the scene. I mean, damn, you don't care about your own mama, okay? Uh, the woman who owns the blue car in the video and the best friend of the woman who posted it to TikTok spoke to WKRG News about what happened. Says that I quote, I was checking out inside of Dollar Tree when a witness came in and told everyone that a blue car had just been hit in the parking lot. Just my luck, it was my little blue car that had been hit while parked. After confronting the then 17 year old, he lied and said he did not hit my car. While listening to witnesses tell me otherwise, he attempts to elude the scene of the wreck and then hits two more parked cars during his failed escape. He gets out of the car, runs into the nail salon to get the owner of the car, apparently, he was unlicensed and driving the car without permission. There was no police report filed since the parking lot is considered private property. The owner of the cars said their insurance company has ensured that everything will be taken care of, all right? Needless to say, the team probably won't be allowed to drive his mother's car again. All right, this was easy young man. Let me just give you some advice, okay? What you did here was make a mistake, that's all. You made a mistake, then you made another one, then you made another one, then you made another one. Dear young brother, I will be the first to tell you that you do not have to be defined by the summary of your mistakes. I have made them too. Being responsible 
for your mistakes means one thing. You have acknowledged your wrongdoing. There is no transformation of behavior without acknowledgement of what you did. That's all. All right. Ravana, thoughts here. Yeah, it immediately made me think of a story that Cenk tells, uh, has told a few times on TYT about when he first got his license, he went to a parking lot and hit like three cars trying yes. to pull into the spot. <laughs> uh, but he did what this kid should have done, which was go inside and say, hey, I'm sorry, I hit some cars. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get my car out. Can someone get it out for me? Um, that was the responsible thing to do. That's right. Now, I hope that since then this kid has realized the mistakes he's made and won't do it again in the future. But you know, really what he should have done is just owned up to it. But I mean, and I understand he's he's young, he might have just been scared, but I mean, how the hell did he think he was gonna get away when he saw the woman recording and yeah. got the picture of the license plate? What did, right. where did he think it was? How did he think he was you. gonna get away from that? Young man, I need you to smarten up here. <laughs> All right. Things happen, all right, hopefully you're on your way to doing bigger and better. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable stick and stay. We got a lot of show left, okay, let me read some comments before I do that. Big reminder, um, aspiration, big banks use your money to invest in a lot of things that you do not like, like political lobbying, private prisons, Fossil fuels, et cetera, et cetera. All right, you can be different. Aspiration is different. They are a member of 1% for the planet and commit to donating 10% of pay what is fair fees. Go to aspiration.com forward slash TYT to sign up now. All right, a lot of comments. Greyhound Dragon says, that Karen looks like he needs a boost to get into his enormous truck. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Craig Chris Souffle, geez, sometimes I wonder if new young drivers get their driver's license from the bottom of a box of Fruit Loops. <laughs> That's good. Um, Soul Life, thank you so much, Soul Life. Soul Life says, I feel threatened. Uh, Ch uh, Cheyenne, thank you, Cheyenne. Gucci Man says, what else, why else carry a knife, just go outside? How spooked must you be in your own hood? Yep, Snack Panther, thank you, Snack Panther. Crocodile Dundee, Karen needs Jesus. Troy Lavelle, welcome to Indisputable, thank you so much for joining us. Um, the Luis Beltmont Show walkthroughs, welcome to Indisputable, thank you as well. Let's go to Twitch. <laughs> Thomas Anakin says, he drives like Jank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was good. That was good, okay. All right, uh, police on police crime. Uh, once again, we've been highlighting this atrocity in our community. Ex NYPD officer, retired cop has now received 10 years, 10 for attacking a DC cop during the January 6th riot. Let's put his picture up full mass here. You see this particular retired police officer decided to engage in acts of domestic terrorism, likely because he engaged in those same acts during his tenure as police. Here's some video. If he'll do that to the police, what do you think he would do to, let's say, black people? Individuals that he does not feel has have status to check him, to check his authority. Let's put his picture up again. Thomas Webster is his name. Officer Webster has now received 10 years by US District Court. While the longest sentence yet in a case related to the insurrection, Webster was initially facing 17.5 years in federal prison. 
The retired NYPD cop was convicted of several felonies for attacking the DC police officer with a flagpole. Now, is there any ambiguity about his attack? No. Is there any rebuttal to the fact that he attacked the police? No. Where are the law and order Republicans at? Where are they? Where's the let's back the blue crowd? Where are they? You literally have a guy who's not even a cop anymore. He's a retired NYPD officer when he goes to attack a current police officer. Are they still backing the cops? Are they still saying we need to increase funding for the police? Are they saying that this individual needs to receive the maximum penalty allowed under the law? No, they're not, but I guarantee you if that ex cop would have been, let's say a member of Black Lives Matter, hell, if they just would have been black. That would have been the rhetoric from the right. But remember narratives, they don't really care much about the issue of police protection. They care about narratives. In this case, the narrative works against them, where you literally have one of their own, so to speak, attacking a cop. They're not willing to call the attacker out because the attacker fits their narrative. They want people to engage in this kind of criminal conduct. They want people to engage in this kind of chaos. There's more. The judge said Webster was the first aggressor in this back and forth in his confrontation with the officers and that all hell broke loose when he showed up at that part of the police line, which I agree. Jurors convicted this former officer 56 years of age in May after they determined he was lying on the stand when he tried to convince them that he was trying to help the officer he assaulted to see my hands when he grabbed the officer's gas mask after he tackled him to the ground. So he engages in this extreme physical assault, grabs the mask of the cop, tackles the cop, and tells the jury, no, 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 no. What you see here is me actually trying to allow the officer to see my hands have no weapons. Now, if a cop a lot like that under oath, if a retired NYPD police officer will get on the stand and lie like that, what kind of fantasies do you think he created on police reports during his tenure as an officer? There's another interesting connected story. An attorney, an attorney has now been caught up. Let's put a picture up. Her name is Kelly Sorrell, 43 years of age, general counsel for the Oath Keepers, anti-government far extremist, right extreme group. So this attorney, a close associate of its leaders, Stuart Rose was charged on Thursday. Her charges include what conspiracy to obstruct the certification of President Biden's Electoral College victory, obstruction of justice for tampering with documents, and a misdemeanor charge for entering Capitol grounds. According to the indictment, she persuaded others to destroy and conceal records sought by investigators. A clear violation of bar ethics and a clear violation of law. After Rhodes' arrest in January, this attorney, told the media that she was acting as the president of the Oath Keepers while he's behind bars. Sorrell, the attorney, told the Associated Press last year when FBI agent sees her phone as part of the investigation that she had no knowledge of nor involvement in the Capitol breach. She called the seizure of her phone unethical and the investigation a witch hunt. The attorney was photographed with Rhodes outside the Capitol. On January 6th at the terrorist attack that she said she was not at. Uh, And was present at an underground garage meeting the night before the riot. That's been focused, that's been a focus for the investigator. She was part of the plot. The meeting included Rhodes and the prolific snitch named Enrique, the former chairman of the Proud Boys. Attorney Sorrell was also on a call with Rhodes and the Oath Keepers days after the 2020 election, during which Rhodes rallied his followers to prepare for violence, according to a transcript made public in court. Now let's put up the picture of this attorney again. 
this attorney has thrown away all of her legal learning, all of those years of college, all of those years of understanding, learning and mastering the law. Why? Because she is caught up now in a violent terroristic cult spearheaded by Donald Trump, former president of the United States. Let me be very clear, I don't care what your political ideology may be. Donald Trump is leader of the largest cult in human history, a cult without walls. That's what we have. People are transforming and turning in their decency, sense of ethics, sense of right in order to follow this tyrant known as Donald Trump. All logic has been abandoned by people that are seemingly smart or smarter than this. All right, Ravana, thoughts here. Yeah, I mean, I think you're exactly right to call out the hypocrisy of the uh, back the blue and the blue lives matter movements. Uh, but it's pretty in keeping with what the blue lives matter means to police officers because it doesn't mean that they actually care about protecting the lives of their fellow police officers. We see this all the time. If a police officer in a department dares to speak out against the racial injustice of that police department, the uh, the gendered violence of that police department, then they are silenced, they are retaliated against. I mean, I've seen cops choke other cops for, for daring to tell them that you are using too much force in this arrest. They don't care about blue lives, they care about protecting the institution of policing as it is, not as how it could be, but the way that it is, a violent, uh, racist, uh, institution in this country to perpetuate uh, racial violence. So uh, it, it's not a surprise to see a cop, cop on cop violence as it were. Uh, it's also not a surprise to see a cop lying on the stand. I have friends at the public defender's office. They have a saying, you know, how do you know if a cop is lying under oath? His mouth is moving. Damn. They, they call it test the lying. It's got its own name. <laughs> wow. You know, uh, police reports are so unreliable. Judges don't even allow them as rules of evidence during a trial. So that should tell you something. Judges have known for many years that cops lie on these damn things. All right. Fascinating. A Florida teacher has done the unthinkable, has decided to bring Trump supported literature into the classroom. Let's put up the lesson that's in question here from the state of Florida, all right? Um, this is from a substitute teacher who used news coverage of Trump's election lies as an example of media bias in a sixth grade classroom assignment outraging parents. It was a take home sheet titled, how does a historian work? And it was meant to prepare the R. Dan Nolan middle schoolers for a test. What does it say? Point of view can affect how one interprets or describes a person or event bias. Bias can be created by inserting suggestive blank into statements. The media is often biased and will add words that persuade you to think one way or uh, over another. Read these two statements made by reporters after the 2020 election. Here are the two statements. President Trump made claims that the 2020 election was stolen. The next statement, President Trump made false claims that the 2020 election was stolen. The first sentence is giving you information, while the second sentence leads you to believe he is wrong before you have all the facts. Now this is called educational indoctrination. That's what this is, this is a problem. I mean, they want you to think that critical race theory is the problem, which is not taught in K through 12 education. They want you to think that students who identify in the LGBTQ community are the problem in K through 12 education. It is not. Teachers like this are, okay? One mother who spoke with the Daily Beast had proceeded to quiz her child on its list of vocabulary words. The first six words were, and I quote, evidence, source, primary source, secondary source, reliable source, and point of view. And then came number seven, bias, all right? Uh, the teacher is claiming that any news media outlet that has independently determined Trump to be wrong in his assertion was somehow politically biased against Trump. And thus it was not an adequate conclusion of the reporter. 
It's actually the most biased examples of bias I've ever seen, the mother later said. It seems pretty out of place for a sixth grade class. She was sure that might have been any number of other examples that would have not brought politics into, into the classroom. Once again, I thought conservatives were against politics being brought into the classroom. That's what they say until it matches their own lies and their agenda. There's more. Her sixth grade son or her sixth grader responded as a sixth grader might respond. Not understanding the danger of the big lie. He said, "Oh, don't worry about it. You're making a big deal out of it, she remembered. She responded as an aware mother of a sixth grader telling him he was too young to be fed political propaganda. She was one of a number of parents who called the school. She says the principal promised to look into it. Let's put up a picture of the principal. His name is Scott Cooper. Here's the thing, Principal Scott, you have an opportunity here. Okay, you have an opportunity to do the right thing. Uh, the county school board issued a statement saying the homework assignment did not meet their standards, but also pledged support for state standards set forth by Governor Ron DeSatan, who was uh, who has campaigned against left wing indoctrination, as he calls it, in schools and has refused to say whether the 2020 election was stolen. Additionally, the board attached a copy of the study sheet, adding that it was Based on chapter one of the following state approved textbook, Discovering Our Past, A History of the World, Early Ages, Florida edition. The board should have noted that the book makes no mention of Trump, nor the election he continues to claim was stolen, but was in fact not. There you have it. You see, look at the laws that are being passed throughout various states, they are literally lessening or weakening the prerequisites for somebody to become a teacher. Many states now do not require a teacher to have a college degree. All of them virtually are Republican states. They are allowing individuals to bring in this kind of indoctrination without real rebuttal. And even when there has to be a forced response from a conservative school board, they decide to measure their response and still provide some level of protection for the educate for the educator who spewed the madness. Now what's going to happen to the teacher? We don't know yet. We have no idea, but we're gonna follow the story. All right, thoughts here, dear sister. Yeah, I think calling that teacher an educator is a little bit generous, but yeah, I mean, it's a good lesson. It should, the the concept of teaching children media literacy is important. They should know that, especially kids in, in that have increasing access to online media. They're going to be getting fed a disinformation every day. The idea of of the lesson plan is good. The execution, of course, is biased and the teacher didn't do a very good job at teaching the students the definition of bias. Because it plays into this ridiculous idea that the truth is everyone can just read a little bit of different sources and come to the truth themselves. That's just not true, I'm, the truth is the truth. Yeah. One article might have done the investigative research necessary to uncover what the truth is. And the truth is that Trump did not win the 2020 election. Is it also true that he claimed that it was stolen? Yes, but to say that that an article claiming that it was a false assertion that it was stolen, uh, to claim that that is is biased is ridiculous. That is yeah. just the truth, and you are you are a, a teacher who is shrouded in your own delusions over what happened. And it's important that the parents did step up and say, "Hey, we have a problem with this," even in what would usually be a pretty conservative area, because they were right. It it is an attempt at indoctrination, and the right has been saying over and over again that it's these. Radical left wing teachers that are trying to indoctrinate your kids, but that's just not the case. That's not what we're seeing. But what we are seeing is a lot of right wing teachers, like spreading little, uh, spreading their little propaganda to the students uh, at young ages. It's bad. It's it's yeah. really shameful. And they're outraged over college professors teaching young adults truth, but they're not outraged by uh, a sixth grade teacher teaching falsehoods. Fascinating. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay.
Welcome back. Okay, remember last week on a Friday, we had an anti-Karen who stood up to a Karen. She was a manager at Burger King at the time. She lost her job because of standing up to this Karen. Well, she came on the show. She had a goal of 12,500 to help her as she transitions to find another job. Because of your support, because of your help, she's close to $40,000. 38,420 is how much money she has right now in that GoFundMe because of you. If you would like to get her to that 40,000, go ahead, make a contribution. You can find her information, GoFundMe, Shanita Foster is her name. Single mom, bright individual, hardworking, very ethical person. Okay, I got a question for everybody. What in the red state hell? You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face, it's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. There's already been a decertification. There's an understanding, a decertifying of the 2020 election. I tell you 100% it has happened wow. In, wow. in heaven. And I'm saying as well, from the very beginning, people keep asking when Trump's coming back. And I said, he never left. He has been, <laughs> yeah. he has not stopped being president. He is legally the president of the United States of America. He is spiritually authorized from heaven to be so, which is the bigger deal. And so there is, uh, that's, there's going to be proof of that. You want the proof of it? There is. Uh, strategy and optics why he's not in the seat where actor Biden is. And I will say again, that's not the real Biden. And and so that's for another conversation. We owe Obama an apology. Nobody rode for Obama like this. Nobody was riding for President Obama like this. Let's put up the picture of Johnny Enlow, full mask here. Uh, Mr. Enlow um, considers himself to be um, a prophet. He's a QAnon conspiracy theorist. And he is saying that heaven has actually decertified the election results of Donald Trump. Which means, prophet, that heaven initially certified the elections. That's what that would mean if they decertified it. And I have another question here. Is Trump the president of heaven? Because I think white Jesus would have a problem with that. Um, I am inviting Johnny Enlow to come on the program. Um, sir, I would love to have a conversation with you to get more into um, your particular brand of theology uh, and your proclamation of government protocol policy and elements related. All right, dear sister thoughts here. Yeah, he said, uh, do you want to see proof of that? And I'll just answer, Oh hell yes. <laughs> right. I would love to see the proof that you have yeah. <laughs> that have it has decertified the election. That's just that sounds phenomenal. Please, whatever whatever evidence you have, bring it forth. Don't be shy. I, I would love to verify your sources <laughs> with my sources up in heaven. So right. that's right. Your people call my people. We'll figure this out. All right. Rayvon, always a pleasure having you on the show. Tell people how they can follow you, check out your great work. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can see my show every Thursday on TYT's Twitch channel at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. It's called Reactions. You can see my videos for Rebel HQ on YouTube and Facebook, and you can follow me for updates uh, on my Twitter, which is at Rayvon at TTV. Thank you for having me on. Always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have a special bullpen. Remember the pastor who was arrested for watering his neighbor's plants? Well, we have Pastor Jennings on the show along with his legal counsel. We will get to them in just a moment. Before we do this interview, I want to remind you of the egregious acts of Alabama police. Here it is. Howdy. Hey, man, how's it going? Pretty good. What you doing here, man? Water flower. 
Are well, they saying that? Is that your vehicle? It's not. It's not? It's the neighbor's vehicle. The neighbor's? 314, I'll be on 13. Okay. Do you live here? No, I don't live here. Okay. Uh, they saying that this vehicle is not supposed to be here and you're not supposed to be Who's here? Who's saying that? They called about it. I don't know who I, called. I, I'm supposed to be here. I'm Pastor Jennings. I live across the street. You're Pastor Jennings? Yes. I'm looking out for their house while they're gone. Okay. Uh, why didn't they fly? Okay. Well, that's cool. Now, do you have, like, ID? And I don't know, man. I'm not going to give you no ID. Why not? I ain't did nothing wrong. And did well, you look, listen, listen, I'm not saying do nothing wrong. No, listen. There's a suspicious I person. A, look, I used to be a police officer in good water. Don't come in with that. Okay. Look, man, don't do this to me. No. You, there's a suspicious person in the yard, and if you're not one to identify yourself. I don't have to identify myself. I'm just not a, a stop and identify state. That guy know me. He came to my store that got broke in. I live right over there across the street. Who called y'all? That's what we got to figure out. But yeah, first, who I. Do you live here? Man he don't live here. Neighbor, you think I'm, I'm here not saying nothing legal. about You have no right call. to approach me if I ain't did nothing Hello. suspicious Listen. or nothing wrong. Listen. Told him I'm a pastor. Listen. I passed him to the hour here. Sir. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. Nobody. I'm careful. We got one that's not listening to us. Look, man, let me see your phone. Let me see your phone, dude. Just calm down, okay? No, no. Stop. I like this. Okay. We're just trying to talk to you and Sir, see. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to argue with you, okay? I don't, All right, yeah. go ahead. and do what I you got to do, Doc. Don't you either. Do what you got to do. Go on okay. and lock me up. Look, just have a seat. It's already locked up. You just... It's already lost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's already lost. Okay. Just have your a... name. I, I decided. He asked me who I was. I said, you didn't give it to me when I first Pastor asked. Pastor Jennings. What you doing here, man? What a fly. I'm supposed to be here. I'm Pastor Jennings. I live across the street. I, I told you I was here wanting to fly. But it's How do I know that's the truth? Anybody? I had the water hose in my hand. I was just wanting to fly. A couple of dynamics here I need to highlight for the record. Number one, Pastor Jennings did identify himself. Number two, he did identify his address by pointing directly to his home. Number three, his wife did come out later and present another form of identification that was disregarded by the cops. In addition to that, when they called this in, they said, and I quote, we got one who's not listening to us. You see, that is not a statutory violation whatsoever. There was no reason for the police interaction. Pastor Jennings was completely correct in his assertion of his rights as a man in Alabama. There's a lot more. Uh, so we do have Pastor Jennings. We also have Bethany Embry Jones, who is his lawyer. His other lawyer is Harry Daniels, civil rights attorney. Uh, we have Ms. Jones with us and Pastor Jennings. Thank you both. Welcome to Indisputable. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Happened. Pastor Jennings, I'm going to start with you. I would like you to give us in your words, how did you feel that day? And what was going through your mind as you were being taken to jail for literally being a good Samaritan? Well, you know, in 1776, we have what we call Declaration of Independence. It says we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And we are endowed with power from our creator to live life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness to have that. And I felt like they took away my pursuit of happiness. And I felt like I was kidding out. And when it first came up, when the officer first approached me, I knew it was something insidious because of the way that he parked around back. He slowly parked around back and walked around front. If I was burglarized and he didn't want to stop a burglar, he wanted to catch a burglar. So when he came up, you'll notice at the first part of the video, he, he didn't get agitated until I refused to get my ID. So, and then if you'll notice at the last part of the video, he was agitated because I didn't give my ID. Even after I was ID, he was still agitated because they want to get you in the system. They want to see, you never realize you'd have messed up. So let me see if I can find something. So that's what I think they was alluding to. But it, it was shameful and it was surreal. I couldn't believe that was happening. I watch your show all the time with a fan and I didn't think I would end up on it. <laughs> wow, Pastor, well, thank you uh, for being a fan of the show. That's a high honor uh, to me coming from a man like yourself. Um, and I appreciate how you stood up for yourself and stood up for your rights. Let's talk about what happened after you were arrested. We actually were the first news outlet to get the video, the full video of the arrest. We can hear the police officers basically trying to figure out what to charge you with. Um, for this question, I'm going to go to Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones, I know by now you have heard that video where the officers are trying to figure out what in the world can we charge this man with? 
and it seems as if they're making it up as they go. Can you give us some insight to that conversation legally? And what claim did they initially use to justify the arrest? We know the charges were eventually dropped, but what did they initially say was the reason for this arrest? Initially, they said that he was impeding an investigation. They had got a call for a suspicious person, and that because he wouldn't give his identification, he was impeding that investigation. However, like you said, as you listen on the, the remaining portion of the video, they're like, well, what do we charge him with? They even said a couple of times, well, if he's lawfully on the property and he has permission to be here and he has permission to water the flowers, then he's not trespassing. So they couldn't charge him with trespassing. So they knew. After the neighbor identified him, which was like the fifth time he was identified, she identified him and she even said he has permission to be on the property. They are friends. He waters their flowers all the time while they are out of town. This is my fault. They still had nothing to charge him with. In this situation, they used their power because they were being abusive of their power. And they took away our client's Fourth Amendment rights to unlawful search and seizure. You even saw in the video you just showed, they took his phone. Why did they take his phone? They took his phone before he was even in handcuffs. That again is another violation of his rights. He did not have to give them his phone, but he did. He was complying, he gave them his information. But who walks next door with their ID? Nobody. Wow, let's do this. Uh, Pastor Jennings, somebody called the police according to the police. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. I'm gonna ask you, who, who do you think called the police? But in the video, we clearly also see where the police, they say they don't believe you. They don't believe that you're Pastor Jennings. They don't believe that you live where you live according to their narrative. You've identified yourself, you've identified your address. You didn't have to do all this, but you did, all right? You did, uh, Alabama law does not support uh, their proclamation, uh, it supports yours. But you identified yourself, they didn't believe you. They then go to a white female neighbor, the neighbor then identifies you. They believe her, they don't require identification from her in order to believe her identity of you. But in order to believe your identity of yourself, they required in your own community that you present identification, which by the way, your wife eventually came out and presented that ID. Do we know as of yet who called the police and why? Yes, it was the uh, it was the neighbor, the one that explained. The matter of fact, she said in the video, "It's my fault." She yep. said, "It's my fault." And uh, as far as I know, she constantly asked them not to arrest me when I was inside the car. She was asking them, "Do I have to be arrested?" And uh, I think the reason I was arrested because one of the officers, if you could hear it on a video, he came up screaming at me, saying, "Shut up, shut up, shut up! You talk too much." And uh, I said, "You don't holler at me, boy. I'm a full grown man." And he said, 10, 15, lock him up. He went pastor, you, you've been a pastor uh, in Alabama for a long time. You have worked as an advocate for those who need spiritual guidance. Uh, but you also are well aware of the law. Yes. When, at what point during this interaction did you realize these guys are going to illegally arrest me. At what point did you realize that? When I when I got ready to uh, walk off and told them, uh, you can't hear this on the video. I think it was cut. Yeah. I walked up. I said, I'm going to the back to uh, warn the flowers. Y'all do what you got to do. He said, if you walk away from me, I'm going to arrest you. Uh, that that's not said on the video. And as I walked away and they grabbed my arm, that's when it got surreal. I'm like, for real, you know, they're going to do this. And it even agitated me more. But I knew then uh, they were going to at least arrest me and hold me for uh, detain me through a 1026. Pastor, how long have you and your wife lived in that community? About seven years now. Seven years, and the neighbor clearly, the one who called the police clearly said to the cops, I made a mistake. I made yes. an error here, okay? At that time, she has now corroborated your story, your ID. Your wife has come out, literally presented ID, pulled it out, tried to hand it to the officers. The officer said, well, it's too late now, basically. It's, it's way too late for that. Let me go to Ms. Jones. Attorney Jones, was it too late for the officers to correct their illegal arrest at that point and let Mr. Jennings, Pastor Jennings go? We don't believe that that it was too late because they indicated that in order for them to do their job, they have to investigate. Well, if she brought the ID, he had been identified four other ways. 
So he had been identified, he had provided enough identification. In this situation, again, like you said, they were trying to figure out what to charge him with. I think because he didn't comply and answer their questions the way that they wanted him to comply. They said, we're gonna lock him up and we're not going, we're gonna put him in the system. And we're gonna make sure that he does not do this to another police officer. But the reality here is they were not following the law. They were not following the law when it truly came to being able for him to identify himself. Cuz he was not on um, public property, he was on private property. That's correct. To my understanding of Alabama law, the only time where law enforcement can say, hey, show me your ID right now is if you are on public property. They do not have that same right on private property. Is my reading of the Alabama law accurate, uh, Madam Attorney? That is Turner? correct. Yes. Okay, so the pretext was completely unlawful. The affecting the arrest was unlawful. Uh, so now what happens, Attorney Jones? Will there be uh, will there be a massive lawsuit against this department? What's the next legal move here? Yes, we are planning to file a federal lawsuit against um, the city of Chillisburg as well as the police department with regards to what has happened to our client. Like I said earlier, his Fourth Amendment rights have been violated. There are some other state laws that have been violated in the situation. And we'll certainly make sure you get a copy of the complaint when we get it filed. Thank you so much. Uh, Pastor Jennings, I gotta say this, dear brother. When we saw this story, I had no idea that you were a fan of this show. Just so you know that I'm highly honored that you're a fan of the program. Uh, and very proud of how you stood up for yourself. Uh, what would you like to say to individuals who are harassed by the police or people who have had their rights violated by law enforcement and they may not have um, they may not have it on video. They may not have corroborators like you do. What would you say to them right now? I would say to them, you know, if you are approached in such a manner, just try to uh, remember everything that took place right before you uh, seek out an attorney. Try to write down everything, uh, date everything that you face. Because I've had a lot of people come to me and tell me, hey, this happened to me, that happened to me about a year ago. Police yep. did this, but to try to uh, record everything. And by no means am I anti police. I don't want people to think that because there's uh, bad preachers just as well as this bad. Police. That's right. So I want to. Uh, I wish we could bridge a gap between municipalities and the community. And I, I know police got a very stressful job, very stressful job. But we can't go out and take our feelings, our personal issues, out on the community. That only makes it worse. That's right, dear brother. Uh, and Pastor Jennings, uh, before you go, uh, let me pose this to you: the community that you live in. Obviously, your neighbor got it wrong. It is now a national story. How has the response been from those in your local community? It's been very positive. Um, even I have anything, I don't hold anything against my neighbors. I still speak to them. I, matter of fact, I've talked to her husband since the incident, and he was telling me how bad uh, she feels about it. So uh, I love that neighbor just as well as I love the one where I was warning her foul. We may not yeah. have to like them all the time, but we have to love them anyway. Look but, at uh, you, man. So it's still, uh, it's still a pretty good uh, environment around here. I haven't received a whole lot of negativity. Uh, Pastor Michael Jennings, a true man of God, uh, please tell your family I said hello. Very thankful for your continued leadership. Um, Attorney Jones, let's stay on top of this. Please inform me of the updates as they come. Uh, this was one of the most egregious and ridiculous arrests I've seen in, in many years. Um, but I'm glad that Pastor Jennings is alive to tell the story because as you know, it has gone the other way for many, many African American males who decided to stand up for themselves and stand up for their rights. Thank you both. Yes, thank and you. My goddaughter said hello. Say that. Say that again. My goddaughter, she's a fan. Tabitha Perry. She said, "Tell him hello." Tabitha, <laughs> thank you so much. Hello back to you. Uh, I, I'm so humble. I'm so thankful uh, that you all are uh, that you all appreciate the platforms of truth. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. There it is. Remember. Galaxy Brain is next, all right? Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable. God bless. Welcome to Indisputable. I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today. But what do we do on this show? We tell the truth. You know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. And I got to let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. People still need health care, so I won't stop. 
people still need criminal justice systems reform throughout this country. So I won't stop and you won't stop either.